Hey, what's up YouTube? Alien Rides here and we've got the Dualtron X and we're going to do an in-depth review of this scooter today. So we're at Last Mile SF today, so let's go inside and check out the scooter. So I'll be doing a narration while we look at some of the scooter features and ride footage I've taken in the past. We've had a few rides on the Dualtron X now, and it's time to create the ultimate review video of this beast of an electric scooter. At a high level, I would not call the Dualtron X a commuter or last mile solution. It's a massive beast meant for long distances or pleasure rides, and it's a ton of fun. It's one of my favorite scooters ever, and let's take a look at why I love the scooter so much. Specifications are always important, and we're going to go over those in a few, but to start with, I'm going to talk about some of my favorite features of the scooter, the anti-theft measures. The Dualtron X will generally come with a fingerprint sensor installed, depending on where you purchase the scooter from. This fingerprint sensor is attached to the current generation i3 module from Dualtron. This i module has the acceleration control attached to it, and handles all of your settings, as well as telemetry display. If your Dualtron X didn't come with the fingerprint sensor, I recommend you purchase it as it enhances many other security features of your scooter. The sensor will require you to input a valid fingerprint to start the scooter, and can store up to 100 fingerprints. The most interesting security feature in my mind is the automatic wheel locking. This system will detect when the scooter begins to move when it's turned off and prevent the tires from spinning. When you push on the handlebars, it only moves a few inches before the motor locks up. The lock won't disengage until the scooter is unlocked with your fingerprint using the fingerprint sensor. I unfortunately didn't get footage of this feature in action because it was disabled for this demo unit, and I didn't have the manual to figure out how to enable it. Finally, the last theft deterrent measure is just the pure weight of this beast. At 150 pounds, it would just be really difficult to maneuver it if you can't ride away. It's also a reason to not purchase this scooter if you need to bring it up or downstairs. The awkward massive rectangular deck also makes it really awkward to lift. Let me try to lift the scooter real quick. Ah, my back! While these security features are awesome, I still personally wouldn't leave it out of my sight for long periods of time. Even if I need to run into a store for a few minutes, I personally take the time to at least attach a cable lock. I usually run a cable lock through the wires that run alongside the stem here. Now speaking about some of the features of the scooter dash and handlebars. Auxiliary buttons on the left side of the stem come from the factory and aren't hooked up to anything initially. You can use them for your own accessories if you want, which is awesome. I'd love to hook up some additional lights to them or maybe an LED deck in the future. Buttons on the right of the stem toggle the white accent lighting on both sides of the scooter, deck LED lights, as well as the main headlight, which is respectfully bright. This is one of the few scooters that I feel safe riding at night with stock lighting. Further controls for the headlight, turn signals, and horn reside in this compact control panel on the left side of the headset. Two LED indicators at the top of the headset indicate the primary and auxiliary battery voltage levels. There's two USB ports on the stem for charging your devices, maybe like a cell phone or a camera, You'd probably want a custom mount for these, and the front kitty bar that this scooter ships with is a perfect place to mount something like that. The scooter is foldable, even though it's still massive after doing so. The handlebars use the same folding mechanism as the Speedway models, though it's rather pointless in my mind since it really doesn't save you that much additional room on this massive scooter. The scooter stem is foldable using the dial on the front of the stem. Personally, I'd like to see a solid handlebar, or swappable mountain bike handlebars for future models if possible, as it might be nice to use wider handlebars. It gives you more control over the scooter, I think. For such a large scooter, it's a shame that the stem has a bit of wobble, at least in the demos I've tried. There are, however, two bolt holes at the bottom that you could utilize to lock the stem further. After you screw two bolts into these, the stem will be solid and will no longer fold, so you'll need to take them out if you want to fold it again. Now, I have had some images forwarded to me showing some broken parts on the stem, but I don't have the backstory or know if they were caused by crashes or whatnot. I don't think it's a widespread issue yet, and personally I would feel fine riding a Dualtron X still, but I would opt to fully lock the stem if I owned one. There is a pretty beefy kickstand that works well for this scooter, but I have heard of a few reports of the kickstand being lost or getting detached after going off-road or riding on rough terrain. Luckily, it's easy to replace should this happen. The suspension is amazing, and the Dualtron X is the smoothest scooter I've ever ridden. While I often try to avoid potholes and obstacles on other scooters, I seek them out on the Dualtron X just to laugh at them as the scooter glides over them smoothly. 
An 80-year-old would have no problem jumping the scooter off a curb or a set of stairs. The dual coilover shock absorbers are adjustable and you can tune how stiff the ride is. The large tubeless 13-inch tires provide a ton of traction for acceleration and braking. I personally love scooters with tubeless tires as flat repairs is generally fairly simple and you can just simply plug it in most cases. The scooter performs well off-road as well due to the massive tires and wide contact patch as well as having an awesome suspension. This is also the only scooter I've ridden that comes with a damper from the factory. It's adjustable and is a nice addition that will help you maintain stability at high speeds or help you keep the handlebars straight over unexpected situations like a pothole or a bump. This scooter is powered by 60 volts of lithium ion LG cells. The main battery is a 49 amp hour or 2940 watt hour battery and the smaller auxiliary battery is also 60 volts at 3 amp hours for a total of 52 amp hours or 3000 watt hours of battery. It's got plenty of juice for me to feel comfortable leaving my charger at home and going for a long all day ride. I never have range anxiety. Riding 100 miles or 160 kilometers should be no problem for conservative riding on this massive battery. The range might be half of that if you're pinning the acceleration the whole time. With a single charger out of the box, it takes a ridiculous 25 hours to charge. You can double up on these stock chargers to charge it in 12 hours or buy a fast charger to charge it in eight hours. The scooter comes with a single charger for the primary battery and a charger for the auxiliary battery. The dual hub motors provide a ton of power, 6,700 watts of it. 100 kilometers or 60 miles per hour is the top speed from the factory, but my personal top speed on flat ground was 52 miles per hour. The power is simply awesome, but part of me wishes they went for a 72 volt system instead of the 60 volt system for just a tad more power for the size. My main gripe is still that the deck is just a bit too short. A slightly longer deck with a centered footrest would make for a more comfortable ride if you're taller. Right now the rear suspension is in the middle of the deck and that's typically where I place my foot when riding the Dualtron Thunder. There are rear foot supports though to either side of the suspension. You can brace your foot there which is nice. I haven't seen it yet but you can also purchase a seat for the scooter and it actually looks pretty darn cool. It might be the only scooter I've seen to date that I would consider sitting on. Hydraulic brakes make the scooter stop quickly. It's got two levers and is set up like any other Dualtron, with front brakes on one side and rear brakes on the other. If motor braking is enabled, either lever will turn it on. I'm personally a fan of motor braking, and if you do ride the scooter at higher speeds, you may want to invest in some better aftermarket brakes for improved stopping distance. The controller supports the typical Dualtron ABS style brakes, but I usually don't enable those because it's not smart ABS and the constant pulsing tires my hands. One thing that might drive a lot of people away from this vehicle is the price. Currently the Dualtron X sells for around 6,000 US dollars here. This is certainly one expensive electric vehicle and since I said it's mainly for pleasure, it's definitely a rich man's toy. There's a ton of material, batteries, and components though that go into this vehicle that justify the price in my mind. As always, consider maintenance and getting parts for a scooter before purchasing. If you're not mechanically minded, ideally purchase the scooter from a shop that has a scooter in stock and can service it locally. We're at Last Mile in San Francisco today, and they would be able to perform repairs on the scooter if needed. That's all we've got for this review. Hopefully we've covered most of the main parts of the scooter. In conclusion, if you've got some disposable income and want a totally insane scooter, buy the scooter. It's hard to find a toy that you're going to have more fun on. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. More scooter content coming soon. Thanks, and we'll see you all next time.